I'm first going to talk a little bit about sage grouse and then uh, go ahead and get into some current research on, on wind energy development and sage grouse impacts. Uh, so first, uh, sage grouse, as we all know, um, occurs in 11 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. Um, it's in large scale uh, range-wide decline and this decline has been attributed to um, agriculture development, large scale range improvements, urban and exurban development, invasion of exotic plants, especially in Idaho and Nevada, with, and then large wildfires, and then more recently energy development. And it, this figure shows you the, uh, the current distribution is in the, the darker uh, colored uh, uh, green, and then the historical range is, is the lighter color all the way around. And you can see that Wyoming is the stronghold for sage grouse, as we all know. Um, the majority of the population of sage grouse or, or occurs in Wyoming and really is truly the stronghold of, 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 of sage grouse populations. Um, a recent study came out in the uh, Avian Studies of, of Biology, and uh, that, that study predicted that 13% uh, of sage grouse populations may decline uh, below effective population size within the, uh, the next 500, uh, within 500 within the next 30 years. And it was estimated that 75% of the populations in the United States are likely to decline below effective populations of size of 500 within 100 years, if the current conditions uh, continue um, at the current pace that we're going. Um, so we're seeing a large scale decline across the entire range of sage grouse. And so what does that mean? Uh, uh, we all know that sage grouse is a, a candidate species. And in March 2010, uh, the sage grouse was listed as a, uh, a candidate species. It was a, um, it was warranted for listing under the Endangered Species Act as threatened, but it was recruited by higher priority species. And so the service um, gave it a, a candidate designation. And currently they are evaluating um, all current uh, data and information regarding sage grouse to uh, come up with a, a proposed listing determination in September of 2015. Um, so they're in the process of evaluating sage grouse as a, as a population as a whole, and uh, we expect a, a proposed listing decision uh, September 2015, um, which will uh, have a big impact of, of what we're doing in these, these, uh, these, these large states. Uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has created these uh, priority areas of conservation, and uh, these dark purple areas are uh, the, the, the stronghold for sage grouse. These are the areas where um, development has uh, restrictions such as Wyoming, the core area, and more recently Montana just adopted uh, the Wyoming's core area policies for uh, energy development. Um, so within this, uh, these priority areas of conservation, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is really focusing uh, their conservation efforts um, in these areas. So we can expect to see uh, a lot of issues arising from these, uh, these dark purple areas. So um, why are sage grouse in decline? We, you know, I touched on a little bit about the, the, the agriculture and large wildfires, um, but I was asked to talk about energy development, so I was going to uh, kind of give you some of the issues surrounding oil and gas, mining, wind energy, and transmission lines. Uh, first, I'll touch on oil and gas. There's been a lot of study and a lot of research conducted on uh, the impacts of uh, oil and gas development on sage grouse. And it's largely due to habitat fragmentation. Uh, sage grouse require large contiguous um, uh, areas of sagebrush uh, where they can um, use multiple habitats. They migrate you know, up to 20 kilometers uh, in a season from their nesting period, their summer period, to their, to their winter ranges. Um, they require uh, a nesting habitat and brood rearing habitat within um, you know, four or five miles within uh, their, their left location or, or the area where they breed. Um, so they are a large-scale species and um, require these huge, uh, vast sagebrush areas. And habitat fragmentation like this um, is kind of uh, limiting their ability to um, uh, disperse and, and utilize habitat that once was there. Uh, we've seen some issues with uh, noise and human activity. Increased vehicle traffic to well pads, uh, we're seeing this displacement. Uh, noise, uh, the noise of the well pads have been affecting uh, breeding uh, activity at LEX. Um, West Nile virus it has um, been an impact on populations uh, where the, the, the water waste from uh, oil and gas or, or CBM uh, generates these ponds where uh, breeding uh, 
of West Nile virus occurs and then infect, there infects uh, sage grouse populations. Increased predation, uh, we're seeing an increase of corvid activity or ravens um, in areas of high development. And ravens can key, on, key in on sage grouse nests and actually take out their, their eggs and, and destroy nests. And so they're one of the, the major predators to sage grouse um, uh, nest predation. And again, I talk, touched a bit on loss of habitat, just clearing of sagebrush. Sagebrush takes forever to, um, to come back, and it's not an easy species to go ahead and reseed and replant. Um, so that's becoming a, a big issue. Uh, loss of connectivity. Um, again, like I mentioned before, the, the sagebrush travel large distances, and if they don't have these key stopover habitats, um, uh, they might be disrupted in, in their long-term migrations. So moving, shifting gears to transmission lines. Um, there hasn't been too many studies documenting impacts to uh, sage grouse from transmission lines. And, you know, a lot of people believe that um, transmission lines are used for perching uh, raptors, uh, which they are, and um, uh, that, that can turn impact sage grouse that are utilizing habitats around transmission lines. And so um, the thought is that you see higher predation towards uh, as you get closer to transmission lines. And then also the thought that uh, sage grouse you know, evolved in a habitat with low vegetation canopy and thought of placing uh, transmission lines 100 meters above the landscape may, may displace them or, or provide an avoidance factor. And also it might disrupt, disrupt uh, uh, connectivity between key habitats. Again, uh, we've seen collision, collision fatalities with transmission lines and uh, this might disrupt connectivity between winter and, and breeding and summer habitat. So W2 wind energy development, um, kind of the source of, 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 of my research and um, the research that I've done with West and the University of Wyoming. Um, and wind, energy, wind energy represents a new form of development to sage grouse. And so we have all this information on oil and gas, mining and stuff like that, but we don't have very much information on how wind energy affects sage grouse. Um, there's few, few studies that exist that review uh, sage grouse impacts and um, and prairie chickens uh, is a, and it's another prairie grouse species um, that behaves similarly to sage grouse. So uh, I was going to touch a little bit about some of the the only known studies that exist out there uh, regarding sage grouse. Um, some of my research saw that uh, female greater sage grouse habitat selection was not influenced by the presence of wind turbines, um, but nest and brood survival decreased in areas of close proximity to the, to the turbines. And I'll touch a little bit more on that uh, later on. Um, but we saw that a reverse impact to greater prairie chickens. We saw no impact, um, uh, no negative effect, negative effect on uh, uh, female survival or nest survival. And, and, um, and we did see that female greater prairie chickens avoided wind turbines. Um, so we're seeing uh, some impacts in the greater prairie chickens, and we're seeing um, some impacts in, in sage grouse, but um, they're kind of conflicting on, on the survival issues of some of the parameters. So our study area um, was located in uh, Medicine Bow, near the town of Medicine Bow in Hannah. It was a seven-mile hill, seven hill wind energy facility. Um, this contains 79 GE 1.5 megawatt turbines. Um, this facility became operational in uh, December of 2008, and we went ahead and, and uh, collared sage grouse in December of, or April of 2009, so the, the directly the breeding period right after construction. Um, we captured 160 female sage grouse um, from October 2009 to 2010, and we monitored them throughout the nesting period. So we fitted them with radio transmitters and uh, tracked them throughout the nesting, the brooder in the summer, and the winter period. And we saw that the the proximity of the turbines did not influence nest or brood selection. So the area of the darker red indicates areas of higher selection. So that's the areas that we predicted sage grouse would select. And we saw that um, we saw selection closer to uh, the turbines. Um, the, the lighter uh, colors indicate areas that they um, did not select for. And so um, we did see this habitat selection towards there. Uh, this is likely due to the re result that sage grouse are strong site fidelity. They'll select habitats throughout their entire life period. So a female will select the same nesting area uh, throughout their life cycle in up to six years. And so um, we don't know what was going on prior to the, to the facility, but it's likely that these uh, sage grouse continue to select these hab same habitats after the construction of the facility. 
So we saw um, impacts of, of nest and brood survival. Um, nest survival is what, uh, that if a egg hatched was a successful nest, if it failed, if it was predated, it was unsuccessful. And we saw that the risk of the nest and brood failing decreased by 71.1% and 38.1% respectively within every one kilometer increase in distance of turbine. So here, if we look at this figure, distance of turbine is on the, the x-axis and the hazard rate or the, the risk of a nest and brood failing is on the y. So as you increase your distance from nearest the turbine, um, you saw a reduction in, in risk to uh, nest and brood survival. Uh, we also saw that, that female survival was not impacted the proximity tournament, so um, we're seeing that, that, that females, adult female survival is not being impacted by here. So, in short, um, you know, we saw a decrease in nest and brood survival, uh, but this is likely attributed to a number of things. Uh, we don't know what's actually driving this predator-prey uh, dynamics, uh, but it could be a result of edge effects where predators are attracted to human development. We've seen that in other studies. Um, it could be the idea that there's a compromised defense mechanism where the flicker of the turbine or the noise of the turbines are uh, thwarting their ability to uh, avoid predation at their nest or, or during their brood rearing period. Um, I'd like to point out that, that this is a uh, reporting on the results of the first two years of our study. Uh, we're in 2014 and this is our, our fifth study year and it's a larger part of, larger part of the National Wing Coordinating Committee uh, wildlife monitoring effort. Um, uh, the choke cherry Sierra, Sierra Madre is part of this collaborative effort, and uh, and so is our study. And, and the, the idea is that we are uh, they're collecting a male component, and we're collecting a, a female component, and hopefully we kind of get some to, at some of these cumulative effects of of wind development at, on sage grouse. And so we're analyzing this information now, and hope to have results um, early in 2015. So if we bring it back to you know what does all this mean? Um, what we, uh, the issue of sage grouse. So we are seeing impacts to sage grouse on energy development. It's part of the reason why we're seeing range-wide declines. Uh, but it's not all um, energy development. The sage grouse are a cyclical predator prey. Uh, they go up and down just like uh, black and morphs or, or prairie dogs or rabbits. Um, so we see cycles that go up and down and it's based on um, you know low rabbit year or a um, you know a high rabbit year. The, the, abundance of, of other predators or prey um, kind of justifies how sage grouse um, survive during that year. Drought is also another major factor in the range-wide declines. Um, you have less uh, moisture, you have reduced grass, therefore reduced insects, and, uh, and you know, prey defense mechanisms in their, in their nesting. Uh, climate change has been um, recently studied at, uh, of, of why we're seeing these um, decreased uh, um, decrease across the range. And then uh, changes in fire regimes is a big factor out in Idaho and Nevada, um, part of the, the, the western states, is where cheatgrass invades the sagebrush habitat, and then there is a fire and it wipes out um, you know, large tracts of, of, of suitable sagebrush habitat. Um, so these are the things that we're dealing with sagebrush, and um, it's going to be a, a major factor in the coming years. And um, I'd just like to Thank the funding partners, and I'm sure you guys have plenty of questions if uh, we have time. So. Questions for the board? Questions from the audience? Come on, we need one question. Who's got one? Bill Ward? All right, no one has any. Oh, here's a question. We can always count on Tom. Uh, based on the extensive research that you've done across the West, where would you rank Wyoming's program? Uh, well, Wyoming's been the forefront in sage grouse conservation. A lot of the states, states have adopted what Wyoming is, has done or is doing. Um, they base, just like Montana, adopted pretty much word for word um, you know, this, the Wyoming Sage Grouse Conservation Plan. And so, you know, that's kind of a, a, a good deal to see on, on Wyoming's forefront. Our research is the forefront of everything. Wind development, oil and gas is, has happened in Wyoming. And so, um, there's a lot of key players uh, that happens in Wyoming, so. Well, Chad, thank you. We'll keep following uh, whoops, the issues and, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not finished yet. 
You've had a lot of cooperation with the wind industry. Um, what about the oil and gas industry? Have they been part, part, partners with you with this? Um, not in the, the, this wind research. Um, um, I know that other sage studies have been largely involved with uh, oil and gas development. So um, I can say no to the wind energy, energy, wind energy side, but um, uh, studies looking at oil and gas alone, yes. That's a good question. And it would also be nice to see, you know, those impacts, not just on oil and gas, but on mining operations um, and the such. So, yeah, definitely. 